Welcome back to Can We Fix It YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about the clowns that run your circus. Uh, shout out to my friend Alicia, who after listening to the first pod and video said that she wished she had a character chart so she could know uh, who all these people are. I wish I had a blackboard behind me um, so that I could make like a Game of Thrones style character tree for all of you. Um, <clears throat> so uh, don't get overwhelmed by the amount of information that you're going to get. Rhode Island politics is very inbred. So once you learn these names, you will see them everywhere. Uh, so we're going to get started with uh, some of the people that I talked about last week. Um, so in the NPR reaction video, uh, I mentioned that Speaker Nicholas Mattiello has a tendency to fuck over progressive women, namely myself, uh, current representative Teresa Tanzi, and former representative Maria Samini. <clears throat> Maria is a legend up at the State House. Uh, she was shit talking the speaker before it was cool. And uh, as one of the mouthy progressive broads who drew the ire of the speaker, uh, in her next election, he found an opponent to run against her. He funded that opponent heftily. He provided him with door knockers, volunteers, uh, and resources. And as a result, uh, Maria Samini was unseated. We actually use her name as a verb up at the State House. So whenever you do anything that's out of step with leadership, people will say, don't get yourself Saminied. <clears throat> we also talked about Lofton Longo last week, who's like the progressive Harvey Dent. Um, if you stay long enough, you will see yourself become the villain. Uh, he was my first campaign manager in my 2016 race. He was one of the only people at the time who would manage races for Democrats running against Democratic incumbents. He got some of your favorite people elected and then decided in 2018 that he was going to run for office himself and proceeded to lie and cheat his way to the win, which was so much more disappointing because that's everything that we fight against. And so to have somebody on our own team do it was just like, fucking soul crushing. Um, so we also talked about Jeff Britt a little bit. And here we're going to get into the cast of carnies. Um, as my father would say, somewhere a carnival is running itself. So these are all the non-elected officials that uh, have a lot of influence at the state house and over local politics and whose names you should know. Um, so we mentioned Jeff Britt, the oaf we know and love, a uh, former campaign operative who got Speaker Nicholas Mattiello uh, elected on several occasions. This was the weirdo who was like hiring private investigators to follow Nick Mattiello's opponent around. Um, and like, not to be a dick or anything, but this isn't the fucking presidency. Like you're running as a representative in the smallest state in the union it's a $15,000 a year part-time job. I do not understand how these people make it to fucking high stakes. Neither here nor there. Um, but he was the only one smart enough to keep receipts because he knew that he was working for a scumbag and that at some point Nick was going to try and throw him under the bus. So Jeff had plenty of emails, text messages, documentation um, at his disposal, like the smart little scumbag that he is. <clears throat> Then we've got another one of these little carnies, Matt Jerzyk, who is another Harvey Dent of the progressives. He used to be like this long haired hippie liberal, like peace and love, um, <clears throat> union solidarity, all that fun stuff. And then he started working for Satan himself and just became like this you know, caricature of a conservative Democrat. Uh, for a really long time, he tried to convince us uh, representatives that he was like the secret progressive in the speaker's office. Um, but if he was, he was fucking terrible at it. Like, I don't know what he helped get past. Um, he's also one of those names that whenever you see like a shit tornado in the news, like Matthew Jerzyk's name will be somewhere in that shit tornado. Um, then we've got Frank Montanaro. Frank Montanaro is another one of these carnies who 
It's like doing your classic scumbaggery, right? He is a former elected official who has his own twisted past. Um, maybe someday we'll do like a full Frank Montanaro episode because he's a very interesting character. Um, but currently you may know him from his stint in the news where he was found to be collecting two free tuitions from his one state house job. High quality. Uh, then we move on to... Uh, somebody we also talked about a little bit last week, Michael Cattuno. So he's one of these people who is collecting a state house paycheck. Um, but he also runs Winning Ways with his father, Ed Cattuno. And Winning Ways was the campaign organization that we talked about in the first podcast, who whose sole mission in life is to just get mail ballots on mail ballots on mail ballots. <clears throat> He is, uh, my personal story with him is he worked for my opponent in 2018. Um, in my first term, I got myself Saminied and the speaker put somebody up against me and I won. And I bumped into Michael Catunio at PVD Fest shortly thereafter. And he had what I described as sexual harassment hands and uh, murder eyes. So he was sitting across from me and he put his hands on my knees and he looked me dead in my face and he said, I will not stop until you can't get a job at fucking McDonald's. And I laughed, which was probably not the appropriate response to have. But I was like, oh, are you big mad because he stole all your mail ballots? It's a rough hit, my friend. Um, but he's also one of the only people that I would never be alone in a room with because I fully believe that he has the capacity to, like, punch me in the face and not feel remotely remorseful about it. Um, and then we move on to... King of the scumbags, Leo Skenyon. There's so much that you could say about Leo Skenyon. There are so many rumors that fly around that building about him, that he's a colossal creep, that he is historically not great with women. That's a fucking understatement. Um, I would personally like to focus on his enormous suits. He wears suits that are like four sizes too big, and it looks like he's always trying to like smuggle another human into the state house in his suit undetected. Um, Policy-wise, he's a horrible person, and he's, like, responsible for some of the most devious shit that comes out of the speaker's office. Um, but just on, like, a personal level, his fashion sense is deeply tragic. Um, and then we've got, like, a little side character whose name you don't need to know, but whose story is too funny not to tell. And we'll call him Statehouse Idiot Number One. Statehouse Idiot Number One was recently caught dealing heroin in his off hours. Um... He always wore like a tie and a button down to work. So I always assumed he was like a lawyer or legal consult of some kind. Um, and he also drove a Range Rover in every day and lived in like the Providence G. I didn't find out till the story hit the papers that he is a fucking maintenance man. Did nobody find it weird that your $40,000 a year maintenance man was driving a fucking Range Rover to work? It didn't occur to anybody that he might have a highly lucrative and illegal side hustle. The fuck? Anyway, now we're going to move on to the clowns that run this circus, okay? Um, so, obviously, there are going to be policy reasons to hate these people, but you know me. There's going to be petty reasons as well. So, we're going to start with Senate President Dominic Ruggiero. Far be it from me to not pick the juicy, low-hanging fruit that is his nickname, Dominic Rubbers Ruggiero. He got this nickname because he was uh, caught allegedly trying to shoplift condoms from a CVS at the tender age of 41 years old. You know, that point in your development when your decision-making skills are not there yet. He, you may also know him from his stint on Last Week Tonight, where John Oliver called it a peak Rhode Island when Dominic Ruggiero was pulled over on suspected drunk driving and his friend, a peripheral character that we will refer to as Senator Strongarm, showed up to threaten the state police, saying something along the lines of like, you thought you had pension problems before, wait till this shit. Um, because every time Rhode Island makes it into the national news, uh, it has to be a Peter Griffin caricature of Rhode Island. So the Senate president, uh, in addition to his personal dalliances, is, you know, politically not our friend. Uh, 
constantly was blocking abortion rights for many years. Um, this year specifically refused to send mail ballot applications to every house. Um, but then when he was knocking doors in his district, dropped mail ballot applications off at every house that he knocked. So are they secure or aren't they, Dominic? Like, just not for us, just for you. Got it. Uh, his right-hand man is McCaffrey, and he's the Senate Majority Leader. He's one of the silent villains, right? So he doesn't say a whole lot so that you don't have any real desire to hate him. But uh, he puts in bills that would be conservative in like 1920. My mother lives in his Senate district and said this year during campaign season, I find it inherently suspicious that this man is sending me what feels like a billion dollars worth of mailers for a job that pays 15 grand a year. Like, why do you want it so bad? Good question, Ma. Why does he want it so bad? And now we're going to move on to my arch nemesis, Speaker of the House, Nicholas Mattiello. You thought I was done with you? I'm never done with you. I will never be done with you. I will be sitting here roasting you and shit talking you until you are no longer the Speaker of the House. Sorry. That was a little aside for a very special listener. Um, so Nick Mattiello, unfortunately, doesn't have any of the fun stuff of like, you know, a cool pervy nickname. He usually gets in trouble for more political reasons, uh, petty political reasons, but political reasons nonetheless. So, uh, he was in the news for auditing the convention center, a building which has not been audited in over a decade because they were mean to his friend. And then when the Republicans asked for some paperwork on that, proceeded to do a 10 p.m. construction on the records office for black mold, you know, when all the best construction takes place. Um, just like an overall shady character. And then his right-hand man uh, is Majority Leader Joe Shikarchi. Now, Joe is much more charming than Nick is, and he works better with other people, but he also shoves these garbage bills down your throat. So it, you know, doesn't matter if he does it with a smile on his face. I think that arguably he would be a worse speaker because, um, he has a nice personality and so people would be willing to let him get away with more, uh, grotesque policies. And I also feel like Rhode Island would become like this capitalist fucking nightmare. Um, like the Puerto Rico of New England, where it's like a tax haven for the wealthy and the rest of us pay $8 for a gallon of milk. But that's, you know, brings us into, uh, the ask of the week. Okay. So it doesn't have to be like this. Um, Recently, Senator Gail Golden has announced that she's going to be running against Dominic Ruggiero for Senate president. Uh, I would urge you guys to call your reps uh, and call your senators and ask them to vote for a change in leadership. Gail Golden is smart. She's qualified. She's competent. And as far as I'm aware, she's never been accused of shoplifting tampons out of a fucking Walgreens. Uh, and then on the other side, we have Liana Kassar, who is going to be running against Speaker Nick Mattiello. Um, and, you know, again, call your reps and ask them to vote for Liana Kassar, a strong woman of color who takes no shit, can work with people across the aisle, and at the end of the day, isn't a petty little bitch boy. Uh, the bar is low that I'm asking you to, to not vote for rubbers Ruggiero and like the human equivalent of a dumpster fire. But like, this is where we're at, guys. This is where we're at. So I hope that this has been enlightening for some of you. I hope that now that you know some of the characters, you will start to see their names uh, more frequently in all of the garbage that goes on behind the scenes. Um, as always, please uh, like and share this video with your friends. And uh, don't bother subscribing to the Collective Action Network YouTube, though, because dope announcement, we're going to be moving to Uprise RI, which I'm really, really, really excited about. The local famous in Rhode Island independent journalism unit headed up by Steve Alquist, uh, that is everywhere that we as Rhode Islanders physically cannot be. Um, you guys don't have to do anything different. I will be still be sharing the links to you. Um, and you can just follow them, uh, to the new home of the, can we fix it podcast and YouTube channel. As always, if you want to help us, uh, financially, please visit patreon.com slash can we fix it. All the links are going to be in the description down below. As always stay safe, wash your fucking hands and go be a good neighbor.